Hello and welcome to the post or the video I should say for uh, Thursday September 3rd for animation. I'm going to let people in from the waiting room. Okay. Hello. Hey, morning. Morning. Hola. Hello, Hugo and Zach in Chatland. Let me go ahead and uh, and do the attendance while we're all getting situated here. Okay, female adoption call. Oh, female ID. All right. And we've got attendance. And digital animation. Okay, there we go. So let's see. I see Blake. I see uh, Vlad. I see Daniel Pineda, Pineda, Pineda. Okay. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Uh, Garrett, Larson, Anjane, Garcia, Garcia. Uh, let's see Hugo, Rivas, Rivas. Cardenas, uh, Daniel Carrion. Okay. Uh, we see Neil Kelly right here. And Diane Villalobos. Villalobos. And Luna Lopez. And Marco Esquivel and Victoria Romero, uh, William Rockwell, and I think I did Zach. Didn't say already. Let's see. Who's going to, I have Zion. I think Rachel just came in. Here's Zach Lindsay. So we don't have Zion. John Drake or Sophia. Okay. There we go. All right. Whew. I think I got everybody. So you guys are good? Yeah, doing good. Live. What was that? Uh, is that you, uh, Vlad, that has the microphone that's distorting? Maybe. I don't oh, know. Oh, God. Yeah, you're uh, definitely you. Yeah, it's you, Vlad. Your, your microphone is just like completely loud and distorted it yes, is it's blown out uh you good now? it's better yeah okay ah uh <laughs> see a doctor about that <laughs> okay um let me go ahead and bring up the uh, or satan yeah or satan maybe he's already seen satan maybe he sold his soul for that microphone what do you think uh, all right, let's see. Animation. All right, scroll down here. Okay. Um, all right, now let's share the screen. Okay, boom. So this can go down here. This can just be closed. Okay, so uh, I want to start out today, show you guys this cool link here. Um, these are, somebody took these Disney princesses and turned them into armored warriors. Uh, let's see. I thought it was kind of a cool uh, characterization. So here's the artist who you can follow on Instagram if you dig him. Um, 
This is an artist, uh, Artemi, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Artemi Mayas Nikov, Nikov, I don't know. Uh, amid some of his creations, he's based in St. Petersburg, Russia, and his art focuses mostly on blending fantasy and tech. So some cool pieces there. And then his art has been going viral recently thanks to a series he drew featuring Disney princesses as armored warriors. Now this is an older post, two years actually. Um, but so there you can see, which uh, which princess is that? Uh, Aurora. Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty is the one with the, okay. What What's her name, Maleficent, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys think, you like that? That's pretty dope. Badass. Open up the chat here. Very cool. All right. All right. Let's see some more. Uh, my my that Bell. My Asnikov told BuzzFeed he was inspired to start the project thanks to two influences: his wife and the new Netflix show Disenchantment. Is that Bell? Is that what you said? Yeah. That gun, no. Because that's the beast back there, right? Yep. All right. Uh, one night we were watching the Disenchantment series and we started a discussion on what we like dislike about the main character. He told BuzzFeed. One of the things we both liked is how she's not a damsel in distress, unlike most of the princesses in Disney movies. Myasnikov started off with Snow White because he considered her to be the most damsel in distressy princess ever and wanted to make a version who would be armed, dangerous, and in charge of her own fate. <laughs> that's pretty awesome, huh? That pretty oh, that's cool. that really cool. I like the watercolory effect of like the background and everything. Yeah. Oh, let's see. He chose a medievalish influence for the designs and mostly stuck to that time frame for the weapons and armor. All right, who's that? Rapunzel. Ooh. There you go. Oh, very cool, very cool. However, some of the designs, some of the designs have uh, more of a fantasy touch as Mayasnikov put it, complete with details on how the princesses would fight. Wow. Hmm. That's just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Let me let some more people in. Okay. Uh, I don't even know who this is. Uh, it's from Princess and the Frog. Oh, Princess and the Frog, okay. Yeah. Uh, with Tiana, I wanted to give an impression yeah, that her layered... yeah. uh, With Tiana, I wanted to give an impression that her layered skirt is a part of her armor and a weapon at the same time. He said, it's flexible enough so she can move freely and it becomes a razor as she Jumps and spins. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Damn, Jasmine looks badass. Yeah, she's cool, huh? The details really make the drawings that much cooler. For example, Jasmine has the help of the magic carpet. I like his coloring, too. <laughs> Luna says it's like RPG classes. Yeah, I, I agree, Luna. This is uh, that's a great idea, actually. He should make a game out of this, don't you think? That would be cool. I mean, I don't. You could play your own uh, favorite Disney princess. Um, and Cinderella can be seen smashing the glass slipper with her gauntlet. The gauntlet, of course, is the glove. Yeah. Uh, so Luna says, kind of reminds me of Sword Art Online. Is there is there a, a link to that, Luna, that you can point us to? It's an anime. Yeah. Oh, it's an anime. Yeah. Okay. It's on Netflix. Oh, cool. All right, I'll check it out. So Ariel gets a little help traveling on land with her own version of an armored steed. What happened to Sebastian? Yeah, Sebastian went metal. <laughs> He got fired. He wasn't badass enough. No, he just took steroids. And Pocahontas gets an animal sidekick of her own with this very threatening looking version of Miko. That's really cool. Hmm. My God, this guy is so good. It makes me sick. <sighs> a 
Of course, Mulan is a warrior already, but here she gets some pretty awesome new armor, and Mushu definitely got an upgrade as well. It has a dragon's already the best one. Yeah. And of course, Mulan just came out, right? The film? Yeah, it's like tomorrow, isn't it? Oh, I guess. I, yeah, I mean, I guess it's coming out right now. Um, yeah, and it looks good. It, it got some good reviews, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see it. Uh, okay, and I think that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Pretty inspirational, huh? Yeah. That's really cool. It's amazing. Uh, now, uh, one, one way that you guys can, um, you know, if you're interested in like building a, what's called a platform or a following, uh, is by doing something like this guy did not, not exactly this art style or this mashup or whatever, but by, by making drawings and putting them on Instagram and trying to build a, a following. I had, uh, there was one student at Pima who was in the illustration program. And it was a young woman, and um, she was just really good. And she had an Instagram account. And uh, I went up to Phoenix. Um, Phoenix has this uh, comic book convention that happens around Memorial Day or something. And I went to Phoenix, and she had a booth there. And she was selling her art really well. She was, she was doing really well. Everybody was combined by it. And I said, what do you think the reason is for your success? And she said, well... I have 50,000 Instagram followers. I was like, what? 50,000? I don't even think I have 50. <laughs> uh, anyway, but, you know, and of course, posting on Instagram is free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just the time uh, that it takes to produce your work. But, you know, um, I, I'm just trying to show that progression there. You have somebody who's very dedicated to their work, you know, whether it's animation or, or illustration or whatever, posts on a regular basis, you know, probably for years, uh, but, you know, uh, builds up a following and then she's able to go to a, a comic book convention and, and sell her work really well because she's built an audience, you know, um, that's pretty awesome. Um, let's see, Zion says, it's hard to have things you want to post uh, often though. That's true. It takes a long time to do good work. And of course you, you want to post your best work. Um, okay. Well, uh, today we're going to watch another uh, in the 12 Principles of Animation, and this one's called Anticipation. So let's go ahead and watch this, and then we'll, um, we're going to do a little exercise after we watch this um, little animation. Uh, we're, we're not actually going to animate. We're going to do sketches um, of animation. Let's see. I've got to turn my volume Three, for only twelve ninety nine a month. This video is based on the 12 principles of animation as described by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston. All right, the second principle of animation is called anticipation. This is when a character prepares for an action to give the audience a clue as to what is happening next, as well as to make the action appear more realistic. One example is when a character is about to jump. Before leaping into the air, he has to prepare for the action by crouching down to build energy. It's like a spring that coils up before releasing. Look at this character jumping without any anticipation. It looks very unrealistic because the energy to jump comes out of nowhere. Here's another example, a punch. To add power to the punch and communicate to the viewers that he is about to punch, he reaches his arm back and then punches. By contrast, having no anticipation results in a very weak punch. You'll see this in a lot of cartoons. Before running, a character will wind up before taking off. In the previous video about squash and stretch, this face actually uses anticipation as well. Instead of immediately stretching up, the face squashes first to anticipate the stretch and give it more power. Anticipation helps communicate actions to the audience by preparing them for the next action. This can happen in many ways. If a character is about to take something out of their pocket, they make their hand very visible and up in the air before going into the pocket. Otherwise, the audience might miss it and wonder how they got that object in the first place. The most important thing is that the viewer notices the hand and the pocket, so the character cannot be performing any competing actions. Let's say that something's about to happen on the right. A character may prepare for that action by pointing their eyes and head to look in that direction, leading the viewers to also look there. It's important to make it as easy as possible for the audience to understand what's going on without having to watch it twice. But this can also be used to trick the audience too, if you lead their eyes in one direction and then surprise them by having something happen on the other side of the screen. Taking anticipation a step further, you can actually have multiple levels of anticipation. Let's go back to our punch animation, where the character winds up before punching. This animation has one level of anticipation. Now look at this one. The character is actually winding up for his wind-up by going forward, 
then winding up, and then before punching, he throws his other arm back to further anticipate the punch. This punch is very complex. It's actually similar to what a baseball pitcher does when he's getting ready to throw the ball. All right, that's all I've got for anticipation. The next principle is called staging. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, so anticipation. So um, what I would like us to do now... Um, now, we haven't actually animated in this class yet, and I know it's called animation, right? But, um, and the reason is because I've been waiting until I could get you guys um, these little tablets, those of you that, um, that want or need them. And that will happen next week, actually. Um, there will be uh, an opportunity for you guys to come in and get tablets because um, you'll actually be coming to school next week. Um, well, actually... Uh, yeah, that's true. Both Tuesday and Thursday, we'll have half the class on Tuesday and half the class on Thursday. I've already got a list going of those of you that want uh, to uh, check out the tablets. Um, I have I have more tablets than I have people who signed up for them. So if you uh, if you think, hey, maybe that would be a cool thing to have, there's still plenty of time to uh, get one. In fact, you can just ask me for one on Tuesday or Thursday when you come in. So anyway, we'll start the actual animation part of uh, this class next week. Um, but today we're going to do something, we're going to, you know, I don't want us to get too far behind in, on my schedule for the class, so we're actually going to uh, do an animation exercise without doing any animation. We're going to make a series, uh, a, a small series of drawings that, um, that could be animated, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to use this anticipation exercise or, or video that we just saw to do an exercise. So if you recall in the, um, in the video and the video before, we saw the picture of Squash and Stretch, the guy has a normal size head and then he squashes down and then he extends and stretches beyond his normal size head size head and has a like a round mouth and big eyes right so we're going to do that because that um that represents both squash and stretch and uh anticipation so what i would like you to do and you can use your computer you can use a sketch pad a pencil a pen whatever is i would like you to um create something like what I'm going to create here. So I'm just going to go into Photoshop and um, let's see, I think I'm going to make it go this way. Okay, so I'm just going to go into Photoshop and, and give myself a document here and uh, click on my brush tool. Like I said, you guys can use uh, whatever you have available, any program, uh, any pencil or pen. I uh, just want to give myself a little good size brush here. Okay, um, so now the goal is this. It's to make a, a small series of drawings that first show a character with their head in the normal position. That would be the first drawing. The second drawing would be uh, the person squishing their head down, like, you know, which is a form of anticipation to stretch up. The third drawing would be similar to the first. Uh, it would be the character, you know, with their head back at normal size. And then the fourth drawing would be them, uh, you know, completely uh, extended up. And the fifth drawing would be them back to normal. So in other words, they're normal, they squish down, and as they start to move up towards the stretch, they go back through the normal phase, they stretch. And of course, they don't stay in that stretched or exaggerated position. They come back down to normal, okay? So I'm using this tablet here. Uh, for the first time, so forgive me if uh, this is a little rough, but um, so you know you can make a. Uh, I want a bigger. I want a bigger brush here. Let's see. Uh, okay, so you know you can make a rough um, sort of oval to to sketch your character out. Um, you know how how many. Um, construction lines you want to put in there to develop your characters up to you but like sometimes it's helpful to put um, you know construction lines that sort of show um, you know where the characters various body parts will be um, so I gave myself a couple construction lines there to show sort of the middle of the face and the uh, you know sort of the arc of the face so it looks more three-dimensional so these are going to be you know the nose and the mouth and all that and, and for the sort of resting position of the character, um, you know, you don't want them to have an open mouth or anything um, because you want, 
you basically want to use all of that as sort of potential for uh, the, the emotion, the reaction that they're going to have when, they, when it gets very big. You also don't want their eyes to be too big because once again, that's an opportunity to make them much bigger uh, when, they, um, when they're exaggerated, right? So, uh, and also, you know, I've, I've mentioned you guys in the past, I'm a big fan of eyebrows um, because I think they aid a lot in um, expression. Um, okay, so, and then of course, you know, you can clean up your character's face a little bit if you want. Um, give them some ears. Oops, too big of an ear on that side. Still too big. I do the smallish ear thing. Okay, that's a little better maybe. Uh, and then, you know, you can give them a simple hairstyle. Um, and of course, I'm, uh, I've got a bunch of junk lines in here I got to get rid of, so... I'm going to give myself an eraser, make sure it's pretty big. Uh, go in here and get rid of some lines. And once again, we're not looking for perfect drawings or anything. We're looking for sketches uh, that help you, that basically illustrate the principle or principles of animation, right? Let me get rid of all these extra lines. All right. not crazy about the line uh, that shows his hair so I'm gonna redo that okay so there's gonna be a little bit of sketchiness in this drawing because it's just there's just not time to make it perfect or anything uh, let's see what I can do as far as this I like that. Okay. Okay, so there we have our character, right? Now, as I said, the first, third, and fifth drawings will all be similar, right? Now, if you're on a computer, you have sort of a an advantage that other people don't have. You could actually just sort of copy and paste that into place. It would probably be better to, to redraw it, but uh, just for the sake of speed, I think I'm going to copy this and paste it in a couple times uh, to show the different stages. Okay, let's see, maybe there, and maybe here. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and number these. So that's one, all right. Come on, silly thing. All right. Ah, please stop being stupid. All right. Oh, God, I hate this. Okay. Okay, so we have the resting face there in three places. Okay, so here we're gonna have it squished down and then here we're gonna have it move up. Now, uh, you know, once again, I have all kinds of benefits via the fact that I'm doing this on a computer. Um, I can do things like I can show, you know, where the top and the bottom of his head are or where the top and the bottom lines are for his head. And that will help me do things like make the squash and also the stretch. So for example, 
I could put lines like slightly above and below those lines. And that could be, you know, when I get to this point where I want to stretch them up, that could be how much further I want to go. And I'm just sort of ballparking this. And I, I could also, here I'll just take similar uh, lines and put them inside here. So my idea is this, when I squat, you know, normally he's this tall, right? But when I squash him down, I can squash him down to sort of a, fra a fraction of that, right? And then when I uh, blow him up, I can blow him up to, uh, you know, this. And so it's, it's, it's the exaggeration of those two states, the squash and the stretch, that, that make the, um, that give you the effect of both squash and stretch and anticipation, you know? So, um, okay, so now we wanna make a drawing of this guy where it's, it's all the same information, but it's, it's compressed into this much of an area. So, um, let's see. So now I gotta find my brush, here it is. Okay, so uh, he's obviously gonna be squashed more here, so he's gonna be a little more circular than oval as far as like the construction. Oh, you see how that line like snapped up this line right here, like snapped up to meet that, that literally is called snapping. And um, let's see, I think it's under view. You have to turn snapping off or else um, that's, that happens, right? Uh, okay, so but going back here, we want to uh, draw more of a circular shape to base the character on this time. Oops. Have to do that a couple times to get more of a circle. Oh boy, that's the worst circle ever made in all humanity. Okay, let's see. Okay, so it's not perfectly sized, but I get the idea. I gotta go down this much. Okay, so I can do the same thing with construction lines. I can draw one for his eyes and one kind of for the face. Uh, but this time everything is gonna be squished down. So, um, so his eyes are going to be these little squishy version of his eyes where they're closed and squished. Let's see. Okay, his nose, you know, we're going to flatten that out a lot. Maybe we'll even take the nostrils and make them sort of flat like that. His mouth... Um, Let's see, what would happen with your mouth? Would it stretch out or would it get really small? Um, I guess you could do either one. Um, I kind of like the idea of his mouth being really small uh, and then so that then it could get really big. Of course, uh, the eyebrows, which I had commented on before, uh, will help with sort of the squish. And then we can do things like uh, put in the ears and make sure they're kind of squished too so they're not as tall as they were. Uh, of course, we have to squish the heck out of his hair. So just make it so that it, you know, squishes a lot. And then, uh, you know, if I want to, I can even get more exaggerated about the bottom part of his face. I can uh, squish it down even more like that. So now I'm going to grab my eraser and get rid of some of these lines. Now, when you guys do these, some of you guys are gonna be a lot faster than me. Um, if you're doing a drawing on paper, uh, when you're done, go ahead and snap a photo of it and upload it to your Google Drive folder because we'd love to see it. And then uh, same with, if you're doing a computer version, you know, export a JPEG or a ping or something, and then we can, we can check them out when you're done. Uh, let's see, I have a very few short samples of simple animation stuff that I've done on my share drive if you want to take a look at some point. Okay, uh, Zion will do that. Thank you. So we'll finish this little exercise and then we'll look at uh, the drive and see what's in there. Okay. I um, wonder why that's not erasing. Okay. Uh, I guess this makes more sense that it would go out like this. Um, Okay, so now we have the guy squished down. Right, and uh, I can even move this drawing so that it's kind of a little more centered in the spaces that I um, 
I had dictated for this. And you know what else I can do? And this is a cheat from, um, from the digital, right? But I can also just scale him down, right? Um, I, can, I can further accentuate that feeling of squashiness by literally squashing him in the program. So if I go transform and scale, I can hold my shift key down and I can click on this guy and I can literally smush him down so that he fits within those lines, right? Now, if you remember squash and stretch, the squash and stretch principles, they said that you have to keep the same amount of volume in your objects even, uh, even though you squash them or stretch them. Now, you can tell right here, this guy's squashed, but it doesn't look like his head has the same amount of volume as these other two heads. So I think what I'm going to do is stretch him out to the sides a little bit. So he squishes down and stretches out, and that's exactly what happens with squash and stretch. So I think I'm going to click on uh, this guy right here in the center and move him over a little bit to give me some more room. Uh, and then I will click on this guy again. Of course, if you're doing all this with pencils, it's much harder because then you have to redraw every time you want to, um, let's see, squash somebody or, or stretch them or whatever. So let me click on this. I need to get on that layer. Okay, now let me go Command T. Why is all that stuff showing up? It's not all on the same. Oh, he's on the same layer as somebody else. Okay, so I just have to select him and do Command T, which is transform, hold down my shift key, and then try to stretch him out enough so that it looks like he he's basically has the same volume of head, right? Okay. Now, um, I don't have as much room over here, but that's okay because this, this one over here, number four, should be tall and thin, uh, but of course it will have to have the same volume as everything else. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that I'm drawing on a brand new layer up here. It's always a good idea um, to name your layers. I kind of haven't been doing that. I've been just messing about here. but. Um, Okay, so now my goal is to draw the same guy, but I want to go all, I want to exaggerate the heck out of him. Draw him all the way to these top lines. Try and keep that same amount of um, volume in him. So, of course, I'll always start with uh, the oval, which might take me a few tries to get an oval that I feel uh, kind of represents this. Let's see, now that looks like too much. Um, that's a little too much in the uh, volume category. But let me get rid of these lines I know I don't care about, that I don't want. And, uh, you know, like I said, I could cheat a little bit here in the digital too, because once I have a drawing that's kind of close, I can do things like I can re angle it, real angle it. I'm sorry re-angle it, uh, stretch it in, and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to do some of that on this. So, you know, I've got a little oval there, which I think will work for me. So I'm going to do Command-T on my Macintosh. Um, and first thing I'm going to do is, is um, squash it in a little bit so it looks like it has the same volume. You know, the same amount of information that's here would be, uh, it would mean that he would be pretty thin uh, to get, to be that tall and still have that amount of volume. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, rotate him a little bit, rotate this little potato looking shape uh, so that it's sort of straight up and down. And uh, then deselect that. Okay, so now I've got that. Uh, once again, I can do things like draw on my construction lines, uh, you know, uh, and you have to think about how that changes when he stretches, right? So now you know, maybe his eyes are way up here, right? Maybe his nose is much further down. Certainly his mouth, uh, which we really want to accentuate as being a, you know, sort of a alarmed mouth, um, is here. His eyes, of course, are going to take up a really big part of the scene because, you know, we're we're trying to get the, the sense of alarm here. And of course, you know, the eyebrows 
showing the alarm. Give my little tongue here. Uh, we can exaggerate everything. So we can take the ears and make them taller and skinnier. And of course, we can play with his hair a little bit. Now, I had said that I wanted him to go just this this high, but of course, this is artistry, and you can you can change the rules anytime you want. So I can sort of draw his hair in such a way that it's almost like accentuating the surprise. You know, his hair is kind of sticking up more than normal uh, to accentuate whatever it is that has surprised him. Uh, and of course, with the eyes. I can go one of two routes. I'll make I'll make one one eye with a really big pupil here. We can see how that looks, and then we can make one eye with a really small pupil and see how that looks, right? Um, and then you can sort of go back and forth and see which one of those you like better and stick with that one, right? So let me get rid of some of these extra lines I know I don't want right now. Now, of course, if we were actually animating this, we'd be able to each frame would be drawn where we could actually turn on the previous frame and see what it looked like. And that would make us, um, that would make all these uh, drawings line up a little better. Um, so that, that, of course, would be better for animation. I'm pretty sure I want him to have a small pupil, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the big one. Get rid of whatever junk I can. Maybe redraw the pupils. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So now we have this um, sense of alarm. So you can see, you know, normal squash. Uh, He's moving up towards the stretch, and so he goes back through the normal phase. He stretches, and then he comes back to sort of the normal phase. Now, of course, you know, in order to make this even smoother, you could do drawings in between these different phases. Like there could be a drawing between this and this, and so on and so forth. There could be extra drawings between each one. So you might make uh, one, two, three, four additional drawings, and that would make the whole thing smoother, right? And when you work like this, um, it's often the idea here is like um, keyframe animation. I think I have some extra letters there. Keyframe animation n, animation on. Um, anyway, um, keyframe animation is the way they used to do animation uh, back in the old days, um, where they would have the master animators would come in and would draw all the key frames. Um, like they might draw one of these, one of these, and one of these. And then they would leave for lunch or whatever, and they would have the, the sort of apprentice animators come in and do all the in-between sketches between their keyframes. And those in-between uh, artists were called tweeners. And so the process of draw making the drawings between the keyframe uh, drawings was called tweening. And that terminology is still in use today in, in things like uh, Adobe Animate, which we're going to use. You know, in that program, you basically make this drawing and this drawing and this drawing. And then, of course, you can replicate this drawing here and here like I did. And then you stretch them out over the timeline and you press a button and uh, Adobe Animate becomes the tweener, right? It does all the tweening. It creates you know, if you said, I want there to be four frames between this and this keyframe and this keyframe, it will create four frames that show that first drawing, you know, sort of transitioning to the next one. And so you have the ability to make just the keyframe drawings and have the program help you out. And so that's obviously a great um, time saver. Okay. Um, any, any questions about this? Okay, um, how, are you, yeah. how are you guys doing? Do you need, uh, would you like a few more minutes to finish your, your drawings? Yeah, that'll be cool. Okay, well, let's see. Um, why don't you guys take about uh, 10 minutes and finish your drawings and then upload them? 
and then we will take a look at them. Sounds good. Okay.
Copy and paste on Photoshop. Copy and paste? Wait, what, 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 what he did. With the faces. When you duplicated them. Yeah, are you uh, doing it on computer? Let's see. And uh, are you just making a statement or asking a question? I'm asking a question. How do you do it? Okay, so let me show you. Um, are you using Photoshop? Yes. Okay, so are you doing it all on the same layer? Uh, I believe it is. Okay, so what you do is click on um, your selection tool here. And uh, this, this rectangular selection tool. Click and drag out what's called a marquee around one of your guys. Yes. Do edit, copy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. Now I feel dumb. Uh, no, it's okay. I mean, uh, trust me, everybody has to learn it the first time, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, actually, we're, we're close to the time where I was going to come back and, and start looking at things. So uh, I think I'll just be back now. Um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll, go to the uh, folders where we are, uh, where we're keeping our stuff. And then I'll ask, you know, whoever has something to show, we'll just take a look at it. Um, okay, let's see. Let me go down here. Didn't work. Um, so, Zach, what didn't work? The copy and paste or what I just did didn't work? Well, then... You, do you have multiple layers? See, when you have multiple layers, it becomes much harder because you have to make sure you're, you're on the correct layer. If you're doing it all on the same layer, oh, it's all on the same layer. Okay, so try it try, here. Watch what I'm doing. Um, you know, put the marquee around everything, around the object, do edit, copy. Right now, um, if you click to deselect, let's see, no, here, I'll have to... I'll have to flatten mine so it's all in the same layer like yours. Okay. There we go. It's all in the same layer. Okay. So, uh, all the way around, edit, copy, right? And then you can go edit, paste. And what it will look like, it'll look like it didn't do anything, but actually it did. It pasted a whole new layer there. And so, if you actually just click on it and move it, you've got a whole new uh, guy. So, try doing that. Okay. Okay, so while he, uh, okay, so it worked for him. So um yeah, I did a little um uh, while we were away. I I I added a little more information to this so you can see the arrows showing that being the squashed and this being the stretched. I named all the different states and then I put all the stuff down here that, you know, it covers. So um, that's kind of a teaching tool, I guess. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is go to the um, email for the class and um, ask if anybody has uh, uploaded something that we can see. Um, you can let me know either um, through the chat or you can just tell me and um, I'll bring I'll bring up what you have and keep in mind that there's no judgment here I mean you know you saw my drawings it's all just sketchy junk on a uh, you know on a pad I've never used before so it it, it doesn't matter we're not going to judge the quality of it but just to see the um, your version of, of, of just applying this principle of animation uh, I so, have mine. Yeah. So, uh, Diane, you've got something? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let me see if I can figure it out. 10.59 a.m. Yeah, that last one. 
Oh, cute. That's super cute. What do you guys think? You. you guys like it? Little vampire boy. I like it. Yeah. That's cool. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it looks great. And you did a really nice job. Uh, you squished him down and you stretched him up. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and of course, you know that if you wanted to go even further with this, you could squish, squish his head down even more and stretch him up even more. That's the beauty of, an, of uh, animation is you can defy physics and sort of the, the further you go, the more you're emphasizing the point of like, you know, how unanticipated this thing was that, that he's experiencing. He squashes all the way out, he goes all the way up, you know? Um, but it looks great. All right, uh, and Zion thinks it's cute. All right, who else has something? Uh, I do. Uh, Blake? Blake. Nice. I like this character, Blake. Uh -huh, thanks. It looks good. Yeah, I like his eyes in this. Uh, he's got a lot of expression right here and the, the, how big the mouth is. And those lines help. They help define the character, but they also help with the, um, you know, that, that, that exaggeration of, the, of this pose right here. Very nice. Okay, let's see. Zach has his in there now. Zach. What? What the heck? Oh, I'm sorry. I was in the wrong thing. Let's see. Zach. <laughs> That's a cute character, Zach. Uh, so let's see. Um, so this is the squished version, and this is the uh, this is the stretched, and then those are the three normals, right? So uh, yeah, I know you're just sketching this out, but um, uh, maybe play around with this a little more in Photoshop and see if you can get these guys all in a line, so we can see, um, you know, the process of coming down, going back to normal, going back up. And then uh, it looks really cute. It's adorable. And uh, maybe consider giving him eyebrows just because those are so um, evocative emotionally. Um, but I like it. It looks really good. Nice cheekbones, <laughs> uh, says Diane. Uh, oh, that was, that was for the last guy, uh, Blake's guy. Okay. Um, all right. Who else has got something? I've got something. Okay, Marco. Marco. Whoa, I'm sorry about that. I have one of those wonky Apple mice that just like, you look at it wrong and everything moves all over the place. Um, okay. Oh, nice. So you did the those sort of ball heads up at the top to give yourself the idea of, of what was going to happen. And Basically. Then, yeah. And then use your character in the bottom. I like that. I, I think that's a really good idea. Um, what's nice about it is the balls are really easy to work with. It's just the circle and then all the lines. And it's almost like a recipe for that you can consult when you're doing this one down here at the bottom. Very nice. Uh, and Diane says she loves it. And Zion says, I miss the eyebrows on the fifth keyframe of mine, laugh out loud. <laughs> so Luna says, do I have to upload it? Um, well, uh, if you're not thrilled with the way it came out, um, you don't have to upload it. That's not a problem. Um, 
that happens to all of us occasionally we make a drawing and it's just like we want to crawl back into bed uh but you know most of the time like i said it, you know it's just sketch level stuff so nobody's going to be judging your abilities based on what drawing so um okay very nice uh let's see uh i do have it typed oh sorry wait let's see. your character is so cute looks like she's nodding says zion about this um very nice Thank okay. you, zion. what's that no, I just said thank you, Zion. Oh, you're okay. Um, so Luna, I'm not sure what this means. Sorry, I do have it typed. Uh, did you did you mistype something? Oh, okay. So did, so you have it uploaded, Luna, and we can look at it. Okay, you got a second. No problem. Um, all right, who's got one we can look at while Luna's getting hers ready? Well, I have mine also. Uh, okay, I saw Anjane, and then I heard somebody, but I couldn't tell who that was. Oh, me, Daniel. Daniel, okay. So we'll do Daniel, and then uh, Anjane, did you have one too? Yeah. Okay. So Daniel. Yeah, I uploaded the, the GIF version, so it kind of looks like he's chewing, so. I don't know what your uh, what's your email, Daniel, in uh, Pima. Uh, D Carreon. There you go. How come? Oh, here we go. There you go. Are you taking that three D class? I'm taking the three D class. I think so. yeah, yeah. I'm taking the three the Maya class. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Went to the wrong one. Um, which one? So the animation. Animation. Yeah. Oh wow, you did a GIF animation. Yeah, GIF animation on, on the tablet. It kind of looks like he's chewing, though. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like he's chewing. Yeah. It's good though. I mean, it, you 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 perfectly illustrate the concept of squash and stretch. And chewing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was like I would just discovered this new thing on uh, on the Procreate. So it has this animation uh, frame. So you can draw per, per frame and then it just like you can play it and then oh, pause it if you want. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. I like Procreate a lot. Okay, nice job. Uh, Daniel Pineda liked it a lot, said it was a good example. Uh, Ah, uh, sorry. Okay. Free stretch. Oh, wow. Well, that's a good job. No kidding, huh? Whoa. Redonkulous. Looks so not, good. It's not very cartoony, so it doesn't show a lot of face stretching, but there is, I promise you, there is slightly. Yeah, it, it's a little more nuanced. Uh, you know, if you really wanted to go for effect, then obviously you'd, you'd squish this drawing down more and you'd uh, stretch that one up more. But of course, you know, it depends on the style of cartoon, right? Right. Um, some of them, like maybe this style of drawing sticks a little, uh, hues a little closer to the original characters. And maybe it's not as exaggerated as uh, other cartoons. Um, right. Yeah. And, and then, then, go ahead. I decided to give her like elf ears because, you know, um, you can show a lot of emotion with, with ears that can move. Oh, that's, that's an excellent point. Thank you. Uh, yeah, because I was talking about things like, well, really, when you think about it, almost every element of the face helps with expression. Uh, you know, the eyes, the, the eyebrows, the mouth, and the ears is a great point I hadn't thought about because, you know, so often we're just drawing the normal ear. But right. even, 
even human beings like you know dogs are very uh, and cats are very expressive with their ears but yeah. you, you draw a, a human being you could you could um exaggerate them so that their ears wilt you know when they're sad or whatever or maybe their ears even perk up a little when they're paying attention uh which is what you did here and then it, it also made me think about the nose you know you can use a, the nose a lot it can crinkle up or it can be very strong you know for for different types of emotion yeah yeah very nice um okay who else has got something for us let's see uh so luna you have a a background that you wanted to show is that what that is oh, okay um so let's take a look at uh luna's background and then we'll look at some more of these uh so let's see luna I like that. Uh, Diane likes it. So much texture. I think Blake likes it in Zion. That's really cool. Yeah, it seems to fit the character. Like you can imagine the character with the long hair, the moon princess, and see her in this scene very easily. Yeah, that's really cool. It's very eye-catching. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot going on here. Like there's sort of an Asian influence right here and with the building. And then, of course, there's the galactic uh, aspect of it. Um, and, you know, that all seems to fit the character itself. I'm trying to remember, what are the name of those arches again? I don't know. I've never known. What are they called? I know I've heard of it before, but very iconic. A Tory Gates is Zion. Mm -hmm. There you go. Cool. I, I never, I didn't know that. Um, all right. And then uh, Luna says she has the exercise two, which let's see, that would probably be this one. Okay, make that a little bigger. Okay. So this is your character like, uh, and is she noticing the bird? Okay, so there's sort of her normal state and she's sort of closing her eyes, hoping them again, sort of back to the normal state, but she's questioning uh, and then she's looking up a little and she's got, you know, excitement. And then finally, uh, she's looking at the bird, which of course the bird moves from this point up. So uh, I think the drawings are really nice. I, I guess I would say you know, you might experiment with a little more um, exaggeration. Um, you know, uh, maybe squish your head down a little more pancake like here, you know, and then here just like taffy, you know, pull her up a little bit. Of course, like going back to Anjanae's drawing, you know, certain uh, certain styles don't really lend themselves to that. So there might be more nuance and less exaggeration. But, you know, uh, we just want to put those tools for exaggeration in your toolbox so you can use them when you need to. Um, but it looks good. I like it. All right. Uh, who else has got something for us to look at? I've updated my background. Bleak. So if you wanted to look in those. Yeah, sure. I'll look at anything new you guys have. Uh, oh, goodness. Is it in the background folder? Uh, there should be a folder for a show for today. some reason it's not at the top it's like all unorganized right now in there it looks like no you know you know it's not your fault because sometimes i click uh sometimes i click inside of uh, sometimes i'm doing my search when i'm inside of a folder and then it brings back different results but if i search from the email it'll show your folder like what it looks like um and it's just just me getting confused with which which one i'm showing so you can see yours was right up at the top um, wow. 
I still need to trim out the cactuses, though, I think, from last week, someone said. Trim them out in what way? Like, get rid of them? Uh, trim them down. There's, like, too many, I think. Oh, yeah, that's probably, um, that's probably a fair assessment because it does, it does get a little busy. And also, I could be wrong, but I, th I don't think saguaros grow that close together, but I could be wrong. I, I probably am wrong because I, I think I've seen parts of the desert where they're pretty close together. Um, but yeah, uh, you added those back, that uh, background with the extra mountain and now the cloud and the sky. Uh, and that, that certainly gives even more depth to what was already a really interesting uh, background. Uh, let's see. Garrett likes the mountain in the background. Uh, Luna likes the off-road track. And Zion says the cars look, look more unified than last time. And Diane likes the beautiful scenery. scenery. I really like the mountain you added. Yeah, it's a great scene. Uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about backgrounds especially when i'm watching uh animated movies that have just incredible backgrounds like any miyazaki film you know studio ghibli um it, but even the legend of korra which by the way i'm on the second book the fifth episode that's that's what i watch so you guys can, oh god <laughs> you can get you can give spoilers up to that point i think what just happened was korra uh she just rescued her dad from prison and uh, I now there's a war starting or something like that. But anyway, um, oh Zion, you're on the second book too. Okay, cool. We can we can bond over what's happening. Um, all right, very nice. Okay, who else has got a? Let's see. Anjane says it could kind of look like a volcano in the background. Oh, that's kind of a cool concept. Because uh, don't you have a dragon or something, Blake? It's a bearded dragon, but I guess close enough. Bearded dragon. Okay, yeah, because I don't know. Maybe that's a volcano. Maybe that's their home or something like that. Something to think about. Um, okay, so Zion, Zion has uh, uploaded his stuff, and he's got a few things I think to look at. Zion, uh, hmm, this. No, let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, so you made a GIF of anticipation and you made some keyframes. I like it. It's so cute. Yeah, it's super cute. Now, um, Zion, have you considered maybe whether you could have added a more squashed frame at some point? I had one, I removed it in betweens at some point. Okay, right. So you, you know, it either, either you like the way this looked or you just lost track of it or whatever, but yeah, that'll give you a little more depth in the in it because then you know she'll be at the initial stage. She'll squash down and then she'll stretch up. But I really like the fact that you're using the hands, uh, you know, or those ovals which represent the hands. And it's also interesting that the way that you're expressing the stretch is her eyes instead of getting bigger, they close because she's actually going from sort of a normal state to happy, and and she's so happy her eyes are closed and her mouth is open. So that's a very interesting thing. Um, so Daniel Pineda thinks it's cute and nicely made. Um, okay, yeah, it looks really great. It's nice to see the, the animated GIF too. And then, uh, okay, and these are some, oh, this is great. Uh, these are just some examples of what we just did. The character uh, the normal state, and then the squished and the um, stretched. Those look really nice. Okay, and then um, is are are um, these other two videos things you want us to watch? Um, Diane likes the puffy hair. Uh, Zion, which of these things should we watch? Uh, both MP4s or? I know you put some examples in. What is love is fine, okay.
<laughs> wow, it's great. I really like it. Um, did you did you have any audio on it, or is it audio free? I didn't. Okay, I didn't see any. So, uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Really cool animation. Um, I like it a lot. Is this other one an animation too? Yeah, that one's super cute. I love the the foot tap. Really nice looking character. He reminds me of Sonic the Hedgehog. A uh, little Sonic, yeah. Okay. Sonic is amazing too. Sonic the Hedgehog music, okay. Uh, very nice. Those look great, Zion. Really cool. Somebody said something about nasally voice. Let's see what that says. Uh, and Janae said, uh, I feel like he'd have a very nasally voice. Uh, the guy, I think it was the guy in the What is Love she's talking about. So, cool. Very nice. Uh, Vlad, were you going to say something? I mean, I, I have stuff, but uh, I, I just finished the squash squish thing right now. Uh, hold up, I need to upload it. All right. I'll just open your folder there so we're ready. I do have a background that I up, uh, that I made, uh, if you want to look at that real quick. Okay, we'll look at that while you're uploading the other thing. Mushrooms. Going to get a crossover between characters soon? <laughs> yeah, we're going to have Cicero uh, and his whole family over here entering the park where... <laughs> The other guy is. Yeah, forget the Avengers. This is what people have been waiting for, that that crossover. <laughs> like the twisted tree. Cicero endgame. <laughs> uh let's see, we've got some Yes, mushrooms, the colors are nice, says Diane. Cool fantasy background, Luna. Let's see. Uh I think this engine A uh the shoes. Uh, was about the tapping foot guy. Um, Daniel likes the fantasy. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, you know, it almost has uh, it almost has a children's cut paper look to it. Does anybody else see that? Yep. Yeah, it looks like something that might be very appealing to to kids. I mean, and adults because it looks good to me too. But it's just that sort of. Um, very simple uh, colored shapes, almost like when you're in kindergarten and you're cutting out shapes and you're putting characters together. It, it has that very innocent, uh, sweet, sort of primary color feel to it. Um, nice. Okay. Um, Luna likes the mushrooms as well. And let's see. Squish, squash. <laughs> Your Your character's so funny, Vlad. Thanks. I think that character has a lot of potential. It can be in a video game. It can be on a kid's cartoon or something. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and he's, he's unique because, you know, you always know it's this guy. Uh, and I, I would really say that it's due to that sort of wavy line that's around his head and, and also his sort of pumpkin uh, top, you know, that little pumpkin stem top, yeah. I guess. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Luna says she loves his mood. Diane says he's a grumpy boy. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, Anthony says his attitude reminds me of Raven from Teen Titans. Hey, Teen Titans. I haven't seen Teen Titans. Uh, it must be good, huh? Yep. All right. Oh, the original one, yeah. Okay. Of course. Um, is that on Netflix? Anybody know? Or... No, sadly. They, it better be one day. It's on HBO Max. Oh, hey, I got I've had that. Cool. 
I think isn't HBO Max the one that has all the um, Miyazaki stuff too? No, but it has Harley Quinn. The the show. It does. It does have a lot of Studio Ghibli movies. Yeah, Studio Ghibli is all over uh, Max and Harley Quinn. Yeah. Um, okay, well, that looks great. Thank you, Vlad. And uh, anybody else have? either today's exercise or maybe something else like a background they've done that they want to share? I have a background. background. No. Mm. This background too. Background too. Oh wow! Feels much more open this time. Oh man, that's awesome! Yeah, it was just a quick sketch. I I literally just had two hours to work because I was so busy. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, th this somebody says something about it being open. Somebody says it's three D. Victoria loves it. Uh, Diane thinks it's amazing. Luna thinks it's awesome. Uh, you know, if we go back to um, this, this is a really good example of uh, what I think is a clear, clear improvement in layout of the of the drawing. So here she has all the concepts really well defined, but you know, it kind of feels like sort of very squashed. I mean, everything you know, it's very framed. It's very squashed. It's in fact, it's it's much more of a square picture frame, right? Um, but then when we go down to this one, we've elongated the frame, you know, so now it's more like a rectangle, which is also more accurate to, you know, what the movie screens would be. And then uh, the big thing that I noticed is this back here. This uh, opening is, is because everywhere else there's information. You know, there's bushes, trees, house, but there is an opening and it's what we refer to as negative space. And, and that is what gives your eye uh, the ability to breathe and, and counterbalances the positive space where other things are. So I think that's a huge improvement. Um, I can see she's still doing things like, uh, you know, putting foreground elements in here, maybe one over here. And then the other thing that's interesting is it's nice, it's nice to have her character in here, but this little, both the door and the house, they form a little frame uh, sort of, uh, around the character. You can see that, you know, the character is centered, but all of these lines here of the door and the, and the roof over the door, they're forming a little arch that's pointing down and helping to frame the character. And you can even see she's using one point perspective and very effectively, and she's, she's put that point right there. That's the horizon line and there's the point. And so it's making you focus on, on the character, which is really, really well done. Um, so Luna says she can't wait to see the story go. Love the sunshine. Uh, Diane says she can just walk into it. Um, I think I did did just walk into it unintentionally there. Uh, and Zion thinks it's beautiful, and Diane thinks it's very 3D. Um, okay, looks great. Uh, what else we got from you guys? Anything? Uh, yeah. I did start to try and color my character if you wanted to take a look at that. It's not totally done, though. All right. Maybe we can give you some feedback on it. And I got rid of that mess along his chin. All the weird patterns or whatever. I don't know if I opened the right one or not. Is this it? Yes. Okay. I like it. I like his face in the second frame. He seems very bulk. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. Uh, good feedback. I, I do also like the second frame face. It. This really seems to bring out his personality. This drawing right here. Yeah, and I think the cleanup is really helpful. Uh, it will certainly be helpful when animating the character because 
the simpler he is, the, the simpler he is to draw, the simpler designed he is. You also have a pretty unique style. I like it. Yeah. Thanks. Very nice. And Diane loved the color that you used. So that is a nice color. All right. Good job, Blake. Anybody else? I put some. I put my card there also in the in the folder. And the sketch of my background. That hair. Oh, nice. That's very cool. He looks like he has a gray hair. Yeah, I, I was like trying to do like something different about, I, he looked kind of plain and then just kind of like a gray hair on the side. I was like, oh, that, that may be like his. His hairstyle know. changes depending on which way he's facing. That's true though. It was kind of hard to get the hair kind of like doing the same wave so i was like oh my gosh i don't know how to do that so i was just like you did good that looks good thank uh, you though yeah. yeah i think the hair is great because it would give him a more unique silhouette yeah i remember that that you tell me greg and then i was like yeah i'm, I'm gonna try to do more like a square type of hair so that way on the silhouette it's gonna be more unique yeah, that, that with the backpack would definitely, you know, help you figure out that it's this character. Um, yeah, and the colors are super nice. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, looks great. Okay, and then you have a sketch. Of the background, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, so this looks like a one-point perspective drawing. So you could do some cool stuff here uh, if you, you know, drew the horizon line right here and put your perspective point there and drew all the lines out kind of like Anjanae did. Yeah. I like the tree. It reminds me of the tree that uh, the baboon from the Lion King jumps on. <laughs> That's true. That, 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 uh, what happens in the Lion King on the tree? Well, With, uh, Rafiki. Like, oh, Rafiki. Okay. <laughs> That's right. okay. <laughs> I like how you uh, just kind of sketched out the different kind of cactus and you can tell that you've lived here for a while because you know what this cactus looks like and you know what that one, you know, sort of the silhouette of, of Tucson style mountains. You know, you definitely have a southwest feel to this sketch so yeah so it's gonna be like a little like the middle thing is kind of, it looks like a road but it's, it's gonna be more like a river i was thinking and then oh. um, maybe my car they just hanging out on the side and then just watching the view you know and that's what i was thinking of doing yeah like maybe maybe this is a place maybe right over here this is a place where the character comes after school and watches the sunset or something like that that's right. That's that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Do you know about the? Uh, have you ever been to Gates Pass? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah, it's really nice. <clears throat> kind of makes me think of that. Like when I was in high school a hundred years ago, um, I know that kids used to like, you know, as soon as you could afford a car, right? You know, you were sixteen, and <clears throat> kids used to get in their cars and maybe drive to Gates Pass at night and watch the sunset. Yeah, that's that where I used to go whenever I had time after Pima. I would just ride and then just chill there for a little bit. Excuse me a sec. <coughs> I've got some uh, post-nasal drip going here. But um, let's see, Diane says, I love the sketch for like a black and white mini game, that same style. Thank you. Uh, Daniel says it looks hot, Daniel Pineda. Uh, <laughs> it does look kind of hot, though. It does look hot. Yeah. Um, 
So the idea for a mini game is kind of cool. You know, and of course that's something you guys can use animation for is, is putting together games and stuff. So that's a nice suggestion. Cool. Okay, other, uh, anybody else have uh, work they want to contribute uh, to share with us? Okay, um, go back to the class website. All right, animation. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Um, okay. So, a couple things. Um, there's a there's a tutorial we'll do next week when we're actually in class at Pima. Uh, you know, we'll have the Cintiqs to draw on, and I'll give I can give you guys your drawing tablets to take home and stuff. But we'll do something about audio next week, and. Um, when we do talk about audio, here are some resources that you guys can use. Um, when you get, you know, we are going to create animations in this class, and um, you know, when you, when you create a final animation, a scene that has some things happening into it, you could get some background music for that. And one resource you could use is this site, Ben Sound, and uh, they have all of this uh, copyright-free music you can use for. Um, for non-commercial purposes, for what they call personal use or educational use, um, you could get one of these little. Right. And they have all these different kinds of styles. Here's one called Jazz Frenchie. And you can see all the different styles that are listed up here. Now, one thing you guys might consider, because um, I'm going to ask you to start thinking about, uh, you know, writing a scene that you want to animate. So, you know, you've already got some character, you've got a character that you've drawn. Of course, you're not stuck with that character. If you, if you want to develop something else and use that for the scene, that's fine. Uh, you have a background that you've created. And once again, you're not stuck with that. You can create something else. But one idea might be, like, let's take Daniel's... Uh, example of being in the desert with the kid with the backpack um you know he might go to a site like this and he might experiment by going into different genres of music and listening to different music and and he might find a soundtrack that he thinks oh this sounds just great this would be great for that scene and you know it's it's just the right length maybe it's a minute long or you know something really short minute and 32 minutes or whatever um and he might take that music, you know, because he's free to use it, and he might drop it into Adobe Animate, and he, he, might, he might actually base his animation around the music. Because uh, in animation, uh, uh, most of the time what they do is they do the recording of the dialogue first, and then they animate to that. But sometimes in a short animation like this, you can, you can put in a soundtrack, and you can make all the movement in the animation correspond to that soundtrack. So, uh, you know, that's an idea that you guys can consider start thinking now about the type of music uh if you want music in your animation what it might look like um so let's see Juna, uh, luna says great job everyone your amazing work keep up the great work um thank you luna uh you too um okay so other other places where you can get audio um there's this website called free sound and um you can click on sounds here and uh this this will get you this will give you a lot of sounds which could be like special effects and stuff um like here's a dis distorted guitar uh power chord here's crickets chirping let's listen to cr crickets chirping you know so crickets chirping could be to help set a scene or you know there's that there's that sort of expression where somebody tells a joke and nobody laughs and you could hear the crickets chirp right so you could have a character tell a joke and then there's basically silence and the uh crickets are chirping so you know you have opportunities here for sounds and then uh, the third option i gave you was this one here uh free music archive now the free free music archive has free music uh which is over here and paid music which is over here 
and you can search the free music and uh, you can go into genres here. Now, because this music is free, it means anybody can upload it, which means the quality varies, you know? So some of it is pretty out there and some of it's good. Um, let's check out this first one. I have no idea what it's gonna sound like. So that's not too bad. You know, you might find some good stuff here that might uh, suit, suit the mood of what you're trying to do. So, and of course, there's more sites out there. Make sure you get, you know, copyright free music or music that, that's free to, for you to use for educational purposes. Um, okay, so uh, any questions about audio or? All right, and we'll, we'll talk more about that at school, uh, you know. Um, now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give you guys some time to work on your projects, um, work on your characters, work on your backgrounds. And some of you who have just been kind of speeding through all this stuff are at the next stage. And so I'm gonna tell you what that next stage is so you can start working towards it. Um, so the next stage, if you finished your, you know, your background and your character, is uh, to start working on an idea for a short animated scene for your character. When I, when I say short, I mean really short, like 30 seconds, one minute, just like something very short, right? Um, and it says, write a short summary, you know, you can type this in Microsoft Word or something like that, of the plot for the scene. Um, it can be a couple paragraphs long or one long paragraph. And I said, make it really short. I'm emphasizing, you know, don't, don't try to create a five minute animation because it, 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 it's, it's too much work for the time that we have. Um, it says it should have the following elements. A protagonist, which is a hero, you know, the main character. A goal, which is what the protagonist wants. An obstacle or adversary, so something that's getting in the way of the goal that the protagonist is trying to reach. And then some sort of resolution. You know, the protagonist actually reaches the goal or they fail to reach it, or maybe they, maybe there's a twist at the end. Now, the example I always give is, let's say that the character I create is a little office worker. And so their goal is to get a cup of coffee. That's the goal. So the office worker is the protagonist. The goal is the coffee, right? Now, what they have to do is they have to step out of their office and walk across the street to the Starbucks across the street. But the street is really busy with all this traffic, right? So, you know, the goal is to go over to the Starbucks and get the coffee, the protagonist is the office worker and the obstacle is all the traffic, right? So now we can do sort of a wily e. coyote type of thing where uh, he tries, you know, does three ridiculous tries to get across the street. So maybe he builds a catapult out of office supplies and he gets catapulted into a truck. And then, uh, you know, maybe he tries to make like sort of a sail or a parachute out of papers and, you know, he lands on a car. And then, you know, a third thing, they're all disasters, right? And so finally, after these three attempts, he's picking himself up, he's on the sidewalk. He looks out and there's no cars. And he's like, oh my God. And he walks across the street, he gets his coffee, he starts to walk back, boom, he gets hit by a bus, right? Now that is the twist that I'm talking about at the end. So like, instead of just a simple resolution where he either got the, you know, reached the goal or didn't, he actually reached the goal, but then there was a twist that just like, you know, ended everything. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that exact plot. I'm just saying that's an example and there's an infinite uh, number of examples. Um, so like I said, what I would like you guys to work on now and you can work on it um, for the rest of the class and I'll come back and check in on you at the end of class is um, wherever you are in this process. So finish off your character, uh, work on a background or start sketching out, writing down an idea for a story. And then uh, Zion says, uh, would it be all right to go ahead and share a Discord server for the students? Of course, Zion, you're more than welcome to do that. And then you can just put the link right here if you like. Okay, um, so any questions before you guys spend a little time working on this? Okay, so why don't you go ahead and work and then uh, I'll check back in with you. I'll, I'll turn, turn off my uh, video, but I'll leave my sound on. So if you have any questions or you wanna type something in the chat, just go for it and I'll answer it. And then I'll, I'll check back with you guys in about um, half an hour and, and see where you are with things. Okay, there's uh, the Discord that Zion made. Okay, so go ahead and work on that stuff. <laughs> 